Hello, roadies. Thanks for stopping by. This is going to be more of an enabling video. <laughs> well, which of my videos is not enabling? I mean, fun likes to enable fun. That's all there is to it. And um, I'm very happy that you're here. If you're new, be prepared. There's lots of fun that goes on here. You must read the comments from the community. They answer each other's questions before I can even get to them, which is awesome. And um, it's just a place for good times and good fun. So I'm glad you're here. If you're new, please hit the subscribe button and next to the subscribe button is a little bell that if you hit that then it just lets you know when I put one up. And if you're in the mood to watch then you know it's there. And if you're not, no problemo. So, um, ooh, a honey bucket just went by. You know, why do they call it a honey bucket? I don't get it. I mean, I... I think it's full of stuff that we don't like, but it's called a... Does anybody know why it's called a honey bucket? There's so much construction going on. It's unbelievable the amount of construction. Um, and my neighborhood here at the top of the knob is already established, but it's the... You know, every so often there's like a vacant lot tucked somewhere, and, and so now they're just filling in, just filling in. And so construction stuff is uh, always going on around here, which is interesting because the streets, being that we're on the top of a knob, it's the streets are narrow and curvy. Um, yeah, I don't even know how they navigate. Uh, I don't, uh, I'm not sure how they do it. But, why is it called a honey bucket? I guess it's better than being called a blankety blank blank bucket. Yeah, I don't know. Let me know. <laughs> Inquiring minds want to know, and you thought this <laughs> was a channel about quilting and stitching. <laughs> yeah. Most of the time it is. A lot of the times it's about shopping. <laughs> a lot of the times. So G and I spent a, a couple, a nice couple of days camping. Um, it was cold. It was cold, but the sun was out. There was no fog and no rain. So we took advantage, even though um, you couldn't sit outside. It was just just really cold and it gave us a flavor of um, future camping trips I guess that was it's what we needed we needed to be sleeping in Penny the van for those of you who are new we have a camping van named Penny and she's named Penny after Penelope who is the um, our logo for Woolly Mammoth. Now, how did Woolly Mammoth come about? Uh, that's my um, blog site. Back in the day, all I did was a lot, a lot of wool. And actually, today's about a lot of wool. <laughs> and so when you, uh, and this is a few years back, when you choose a name, um, you want something that someone else doesn't have. So it took me several tries. You know, Wooly Lady is a business already. There's Wooly this, Wooly that. And so I said, well, I'll just do Wooly Mammoth. Well, even Wooly Mammoth, I had to do um, alternate spellings to see if I could get one that wasn't used. And so finally Google let me, let me have Wooly Mammoth with an I-E. And then I asked my older son, who is an artist, he, uh, I said, I need a logo with a woolly mammoth. And he's like, what's a woolly mammoth? And I said, come on, you know what that is. You played with little figures and you can just Google it and uh, photograph. I said, but she, she's a girl, woolly mammoth. And so he drew the woolly mammoth and I named her Penelope. 
and so our van is called Penny for short. It's my traveling stitch mobile is what it is, or shopping mobile. So that is the history of Woolly Mammoth. Like you really wanted to know that, right? Yeah, so back to the camping. So I um, was in a rush to pack a bunch of stuff and ended up just packing my um, hexes. And I thought, well, that's, that's okay. I have lots of hexes to do. And I had two projects that I really wanted to get done. And um, one hexy I can show you that's completed is this little hexy with the bee. Isn't that sweet? Now the other one I can't show you because some of you might guess about that hexy. So all I can show you is that this is the background. <laughs> the hexies are all prepped. I'm just starting to sew them together. And um, once I uh, get those hexies done, then they will be done. I keep my hexies in my Yazzie hexi bag. And see, it has that awesome hexi with the little love you heart. I, I hand stitched this with silk thread on the top of this um, Yazzie bag. So that got to go for the first time in a while on a camping trip. Next week, um, next week is going to be a big wool stitching week. I have lots of plans. I have to um, prep marches and get that going because um, March is coming up, coming up, and I'm doing the Buttermilk Basin uh, Gnome Through the Year ornaments, and I'm hanging them on a little tree that I have here in the beehive, and for those of you who are new, the beehive is my sewing stitching room, and I have this little fake tree or artificial tree. I shouldn't call it fake. It might be offended. Uh, artificial tree. And these are um, gnomes ornaments that Stacy West has designed each month through the year. And so I'm going to be stitching them and before the end of March this will be hanging on the tree. And you can see it's a little leprechaun gnome with a um, pot of gold. And included in it, besides the pattern, is all the wool and the buttons. I also have to finish stitching and get this ready. This is the home project, which is the big home pillow. And inside the center of the O on home, this resides. And it is a home mat of the month. And the pillow is a big pillow and it is sitting on the bench in the entryway to my house and so I need to get marches ready to load up when we flip over to March which is shocking how quick uh, this year is going already. You would think we were all doing such fabulous thing that time was just flying by but I don't know about you but it's just flying by for no reason at all. I'm not, I'm not quite sure what's going on. So I'm drinking out of Be the Change. This is a, a cup that my friend Becca gave me. So that's, that's what's uh, already going on. I wanted to talk to you about blocks of the month um, because Many of you have asked about blocks of the month. Many of you are interested in wool. And um, so I thought I would talk a little bit since I am starting a new, the 2022 block of the month with Sue Spargo. Now, th she offered two. And the one I'm doing is called Trade Winds. And uh, there's also another one that's a Christmas tree themed one. 
Block of the months, if you're nervous about it, they are an awesome way to dip one's toe into a new genre that you're not used to or um, a more economical way in terms of the cost up front. And what I mean by that is wool can be um, quite spendy. The product, everything is spendy now. Oh my gosh, I was looking at flowers like from a florist. Everything was 60 and $70. It was, besides the fact that I really couldn't even find a florist, but I was looking at online sites. So everything is spendy. There's no two ways about it. But I hate for you to not enjoy or experience the world of wool because of that. And that's why I wanted to take this video to talk a little bit about blocks of the months or kits. So when you go to buy wool by the yard, it's, it's spendy and you have to... Um, you have to know the colors and you have to know the texture feel because I'm more of a wool person as opposed to a felt. Uh, felt is those sheets like you get in the craft store um, and they feel different. Now you can use them and you also, if you're allergic to wool, which some of my um, subscribers are allergic to wool, they use flannel. Any wool pattern can be converted to flannel or for that matter cotton. Uh, it just takes a little different technique. But don't be turned off by a wool pattern because you're allergic to wool because there are other products that you can use. When you sign up though for a block of the month you are getting a monthly bite of a bigger project which is <coughs> much more manageable. Now, Sue Spargo, she does a special block of the month, like I said, where there is not a book or a pattern out. She, after the block of the month is released at the end of the year, then she takes some time and develops a book, and then the book is released, and then the vast majority, anybody who wants the book can get the book. So you can wait for that. And that's because um, designers spend, it's their lifeblood uh, designing these awesome patterns and designs and they don't want to be plagiarized basically. I mean it's like uh, copied or, so she's very, very, she has an awesome system where if you sign up for the current block of the month, of which you can't now, sorry, <laughs> but this is in preparation for 2023 because there'll be others, or for kits for that matter, for other projects. She will send you each month the, and you can opt out of the thread if you want, but what you get sent each month, this is a 12-month project, is you get sent this lovely little pile of wool. So instead of buying like a, a fat quarter or a half yard, she's sending you exactly the size you need for this particular month. So you're not having this humongous investment. And that goes for all wool kits. When you order a kit from Buttermilk Basin or Primitive Gatherings or the Cotton Harvest, you're getting the wool that you need for the kit. So you're not going to have an excess of leftover, for one thing. Although I do save <clears throat> every little scrap left because I could use it in a future project. But you're also getting, as you can see, the color palette of this. I generally 
am a primitive girl, so this is not the wool color palette I would have in my stash. So I love getting just the wool that I need. And then I opted to get the thread that I needed. And so she sends the thread that she uses, and in the instructions you get the thread that you need. And the way she is running the program this year is that if you have anything that you see on her site you can uh, that's not related to the block of the month, you can email the block of the month coordinator and add that on as an additional purchase without having an additional cost to shipping. It's going to be shipped with your block of the month. So when I get the email, because I'm on her mailing list, I ordered this tulip bead crochet hook. I'm thinking that this is going to expand some of my um, talent. That's all I'm going to say. Some of my talent. And then she just had released this book. Now, my biggest challenge is decision. I like to be told what to do. I mean, every so often I'll venture out of my comfort zone and actually do something of my own choosing. I do like to personalize a project a little bit, but when it comes to stitching, I like to be told what to do. And I saw that she released this book with all of the stitches for her birds. Chirp. And it's a, it's a, it's the sweetest little book. I mean, it's the sweetest little book. I mean, look at that. But what I remembered is I had bought a little bird kit from her a while ago. And I bought it from the stitching post because the stitching post carries a lot of Sue Spargos. So, um, you know, where I get my Sue Spargo, um, stuff is the stitching post, Sue Spargo herself, or the cotton harvest for Canadians. So um, I'll put those links in the drop down box. Um, but I had to dig out, uh, I had to dig out that chart because I knew that book was coming. And it has a pattern in it, but I just, and it had this cute little thread pack. It also had a pack of just the amount of wool squares I needed, and the background, and some other pieces of wool I need. So I'm very excited to prep this project, and I'm going to prep it next week. I'm pretty sure I'm going to. I have I have huge aspirations, let me just tell you. And also included in this kit were the two needles that you need. Because some of the stitches, the embellishment stitches that one would do on wool, require special needles. And that is all explained in um, your pattern. I just, this is just, this is the background. This is going to be so lovely. Yeah. So lovely. Um, and so, uh, those needles, like, um, Certain needles, you need to have the barrel be all of the same size, and you may not notice it, but a lot of times on needles, where the eye of the needle is, is slightly larger than where the point of the needle is, which makes those wrapped stitches really much more difficult to get done. And, and so, there you go. 
So I'm excited. This is so cute. I totally I got this from the Stitch and Post this kit. So I ordered that book, uh, Chirp, and it came in with my block of the month. Now she recommends with the block of the months because, um, and I think it's genius when I think about my other block of the months from other designers, I think I'm going to do the same thing, is that each month you get a sheet with instructions, the pattern, um, suggestions, and she suggests that you put them into covered pages, which I already had a pack, and into um, a three ring binder, which <clears throat> I have. And that way you'll keep that pattern sequential and organized. You may not, like me, be organized when it comes to the whole ball of wax, but at least the binder will be organized. And with that organization comes the fact that I had to figure out, since this was starting right away, um, how to feel somewhat, I don't want to say necessarily <clears throat> in control, but yeah, somewhat um somewhat manageable, I guess, because uh, I know that if I feel, whether I am or not, but if I feel I am organized a bit, I am less anxious and stressed, and that is always my goal, is to um, make sure that my stitching is my happy place and not like I'm doing my yearly taxes. Yeah, I don't want to feel like that. So I looked at my Yazzie bags and I said, I, I think I'm going to have to reorganize them. And I took the Sasha Co. out of my Maxi Yazzie bag. This is awesome. Because it already had, on one half of it, it already had my... Um, my sand dollars and all the thread, and I did not want to take that out. This is my sand dollar. Isn't that awesome? I think it's awesome. I think it's awesome. And I thought, well, I'll just make the other half of it also this 2022's block of the month. And so I'm going to organize everything into on this half for the trade wins, which I'm doing. <clears throat> but I think this idea of putting the pattern in these cover sheets and into a binder <coughs> would be great for any block of the month, whether you do primitive gatherings, whether you do buttermilk basin. It's going to be a go-to place instead of this, this um, fluffy pile of things. So I'm actually going to pay attention to what I have going and try to organize it better. <clears throat> the wind is blowing outside so my allergies and I kind of sound like I got my sexy voice on. <clears throat> so Okay, so that's it. That's what I wanted to share with you today. And I hope that I didn't scare any of you away from the blocks of the month because it is a nice way to get a bite one month at a time and to um, kind of dip your toe into wool um, if you want to do a bigger project. Or even, even smaller projects like these... Um, little circles they come out monthly and buttermilk basin has a free she's so generous she does this uh, free um, something free monthly each year and this year it's sewing themed 
and you can go on her website. Uh, actually, her um, I think you get it off her blog site and download the pattern and um, enjoy yourself. Uh, she also has a new home decor book coming out. Oh my gosh. It looks beautiful. And let me tell you, she has got the decor thing down. If you ever get a chance to go to her shop, you must. Yeah. My go-to list in the future is to get to Sue Spargo's shop. I would like to like to get there. And I'll visit Stacy this year too. Because I'll probably be bumping around the neighborhood later this year. Well, thank you so much. I hope I didn't scare you away. I hope I Im it brought you in to the world of wool. And we'll I'll let you keep up with me as I go along. Now with the Sue Spargo block of the month, I cannot show you what I'm stitching. But each month, I'll show you the thread and the wool before I've done anything with it because you're going to just love the colors. And anything you get from Sue's shop is um, just spot on. Just spot on. Okay, take care. Go out and enjoy the good weather if you have good weather. If you don't, stay in and enjoy the stitching. Love you guys. You take care. P.S. Postscript. I forgot to tell you something. You're going to want to stay tuned for the next Quilt Roadie video. Hopefully it'll be the next one because I'm going to be starting, hopefully, a sew along with those who want to join me for a table runner that I I just I just needed something fun and um, you know that isn't gonna be like a two month long process you know some of those kind of things with the fat quarter shop and they're going to be giving me a gift card to give away to one of you so that will probably be on the next video I'm waiting for the package to arrive with the oh the charm packs so if you wanna stitch along you can go on to fat quarter shop and um, look at the um, charm packs for Dr. Seuss <laughs> and get ready. I'll tell you the pattern next time because I can't remember it off the top of my head, but it is a charm pack uh, table runner. And I thought it would be so fun to make something for my uh, grandsons to have on their table and, and, you know, just something fun. These kids nowadays, they need a little bit more fun. And, uh, and that the Fat Quarter Shop was so nice to um, offer a gift card. So that'll be on the next Quilt Rodies video. So I hope I see you over there. Again, thanks. Thanks for hanging out with me. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.